Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of the Science Applied series. In this episode, we're gonna be covering my full and complete upper and lower body warm-up routines. Now first, any warm-up is gonna serve two main purposes. The first is to reduce the risk of injury when lifting and to increase your actual strength performance in the gym, which may actually yield better size gains over time as well. Now on the injury side, a systematic review from Fradkin and colleagues looked at the impact of warming up on injury reduction in five different studies and found that three of five did show a reduced risk of injury from warming up and the two that showed no benefit tended to focus the warm up more heavily on stretching rather than just raising core body temperature, implying that literally warming your body up probably is the most important factor in an effective warm up routine. And those guys who spend half their time in the gym getting quote warmed up with all kinds of crazy mobility drills may not actually be doing much extra for preventing injury. So on the performance side, a paper from McGowan and colleagues outlined all of the established benefits of having a higher body temperature, including increased muscle metabolism better phosphocreatine and ATP utilization, leading to better power output. Now, there's also the psychological aspect of warming up where you're probably gonna feel much more primed to lift if you take the time to rehearse the workout in your head before lifting and think about a few of the cues for the muscle you're about to hit ahead of time. So we're gonna break the warm up up into three separate sections, the general warm up, the specific warm up, and progressive pyramid loading. So we'll start with the general warm up, where basically the goal is just to get the blood flowing and increase core body temperature. Now the literature recommends a heart rate of 55 to 65% of max heart rate. So for most young active folks, something around 100 to 120 beats per minute is probably your target zone. But my main guide is to just get to the point of breaking a light sweat. If you work at a moderate pace on an incline treadmill or a Stairmaster, you can usually get to that point in five or 10 minutes, especially if you wear a baggy hoodie, which I definitely recommend for anyone training in a colder climate, if you're naturally colder, or if you train early in the morning when core body temperature will be at its lowest. You can also bring the general warm up time down by using moderate intensity interval training, where you can go at a more assertive pace for 20 to 30 seconds, then at a low pace for a minute or so, and then repeat until you feel a light sweat coming on. And once you reach that point, you should stop. Since the goal here isn't to burn calories or have this count as formal cardio, that's just to get you primed for the heavy lifting. And you should do this before every session, now you're gonna feel a lot better, you're gonna have a more clear head, and you'll probably perform better and be much less likely to hurt yourself with absolutely no downside. And the general warm-up should take you about five to 10 minutes. The second phase is the specific warm-up, which is gonna be different for upper body and lower body. Here the goal is to loosen up the muscles and take the joints through the full range of motion that they're about to perform in the actual training itself. Uh, so let's just start with the lower body first. So I'll start with a quick two to three minute foam roll, focusing on tight, active muscles. Now, if you guys saw my full video on foam rolling which I'll link below you know that while I do think it's a bit overhyped it has been shown to reduce soreness and improve range of motion without hindering strength performance so when a modality has a potential benefit with no obvious downside and you notice some positive effects when including it then I think it makes sense to do it as long as you have the time so personally I'll spend about 15 to 20 seconds or so on my quads and I'll roll out my upper back and lower back with flexed abs so you don't want to allow your lower back to just loosely hyperextend over the foam roller but if you keep your abs tight I find this helps get the entire back feeling nice and loosened up. And then I'll roll out my inner thighs and adductors, and then I'll cross my leg over my knee to stretch out the glutes and piriformis muscle and then roll that out. And if you really have tight hamstrings or glutes, you can use a lacrosse ball to really work out those areas as well. After that, I'll jump into a dynamic stretching routine, which has been shown to improve performance in several studies, unlike static stretching, which has been associated with performance detriments. However, static stretching probably isn't as bad as we used to think. You know, the negative impact only seems to matter if you're holding pretty intense stretches for longer than 30 seconds or so per muscle. So for dynamic work, I'll start with a few light walking lunges. Then I'll do 10 to 12 leg swings front to back to stretch out the hamstrings. Then I'll do 10 to 12 leg swings side to side to open up the hips, adductors, and groin area. I'll do 10 to 12 step throughs with a slight one to two second pause with the knee really brought forward to stretch out the glutes. And there are a few other stretches like the scorpion stretch and the knee drive rotating squat that you can include here if you're feeling especially tight that day. Now, some people have specific areas that are gonna need extra work on specific days because of flexibility issues or tightness. So we're gonna go through a few of them here. For example, on days that I sumo deadlift, I'll do a squat and reach stretch to open up my hips and adductors so I can get into that wide sumo stance comfortably. So you wanna grab your toes with a slight knee bend and then squat down and really lift your chest up until you feel a strong stretch in your inner thighs and hamstrings 
and then hold that stretch for 10 to 15 seconds. Cossack squats can also be great for this, where you're basically squatting down to one side, really stretching out your adductors in the process. And if you find it hard to keep your balance on these, you can start with your hands on the floor or by grabbing something in front of you until you get the full movement down. Other people really struggle to hit depth on squats because of tight ankles or calves. So simply doing some slow eccentric calf raises while really focusing on stretching the calves at the bottom should get them nice and loosened up for squats if that's an issue. So depending on just how many of these drills you include, you should be able to get through this phase in about three or four minutes. Now, so up next is the third phase, which is the progressive pyramid loading phase, where you're gonna pyramid your way up in weight until you get to your working weight for that day. So for example, let's take week six, day one of my new upper Lower program, which calls for three sets of six reps on the squat with 77.5% of your one rep max. So for me, that comes out to three sets of six with 330 pounds. So I'll first do the bar for only 10 or 12 reps. I'll rest for 30 seconds or so. Then I'll do 135 for four or five reps and 225 for three or four reps, 275 for one or two reps, and then begin my three working sets with 330 pounds for six reps. And usually for most sets in the four to 10 rep range, working your way up with three to four pyramid sets, gradually building on each other will be enough. You also wanna make sure that you're decreasing the reps across pyramid sets so that you're not exhausting yourself. And the idea is to get yourself psychologically and physically prepared for the weight you're about to put on your back, not to actually fatigue your muscles in any way. And this should only take another five, maybe 10 minutes or so, depending on just how heavy the weight is that you're building up to. And you really only need a full progressive pyramid like this for main heavy compound lifts. So you should be able to just jump into most of the other exercises planned without a full pyramid warmup. Now, personally, I think that that time investment is worth a performance increase and reduced injury risk. Now, but I can see how some people might think it's a bit excessive. So there are a few ways that you can cut down on your total warmup time, such as by skipping the foam rolling, since it isn't mandatory, and using exercises that don't require the same extensive pyramid warmups, such as Bulgarian split squats or lunges. Now, my upper body dynamic warmup is a bit shorter, so running through the same basic sequence after the general warmup or cardio, I'll jump into dynamic stretching, where I'll do 10 to 12 small arm circles into big arm circles. I'll do 10 to 12 side to side arm swings, and then I'll do 15 or so band pull aparts, which is great for preventing shoulder pain while benching, in my experience. And then I'll do some banded external rotations and some banded face pulls to really get the rotator cuff nice and warmed up. And usually that's about it for me. Now, if you find your shoulder mobility is really lagging, you can do some wall slides as a prehab drill where you're basically pinning your elbows against a wall while lifting your arms up overhead. And the overhead dumbbell side bend can also be great for helping walk your arms out overhead on any vertical pressing in your program. And then I'll usually skip foam rolling on upper body days, but sometimes before bench pressing, I'll roll out my thoracic spine and my hip flexors, which can actually go a pretty long way in improving your positioning on the bench press, since the arch is gonna be much easier to set up and you'll be able to get your feet set further back without risking pulling a hip flexor. And from there, I'm gonna jump into my progressive loading pyramid for my main exercise since the working weight is usually lighter on upper body movements, I find I can get away with just two or three pyramid sets before jumping into the working sets. And if you're starting with an exercise like a row or a pull up, you may need to only do one or two pyramid sets before hopping right into the meat of the workout. So for upper body, you're looking at about 10 to 15 minutes total warm up before jumping into it, which again, I think is well worth the reduced injury risk and improved performance that you'll see. So guys, that is my full warm up routine for my upper and lower body. Now, there are always more drills that you can add for specific scenarios, but I think that if you just focus on increasing your body temperature, taking the joints that are gonna be active through their full range of motion and progressively working your way up to your working weight, you've got plenty, and I would say most of your base is covered. Uh, so hopefully you guys found the video to be helpful. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up. Make sure you check out my new upper lower size and strength program, which I'll put a button to over here next to my head. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next video.